and uh, we're going to get started. So today, whoops, I'm going to share with you a little bit. Um, this is at James's request. He's like, I want you to just talk about your process. So um, I will tell you, first of all, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm a totally different agent than Jen, than Cindy, than Darcy, than, um, you know, Barry. Um, so we're all, all of us are so different and so unique. So don't ever try and copy, copy everything about someone and feel like you're not measuring up if you don't do it exactly like them. And this is just a few things that I live by and that I swear by. And now after six years, which is feel still still feel like a rookie, but uh, there are a few things that like I'm kind of immovable on now at this point, you know, for this part of my career. So some things I've learned along the way. Um, so this is one of the things I learned. Um, the tools in our EXP tool chest are awesome. This is my listing presentation cover sheet. I don't say some things I learned along the way. That's not the title of my listing presentation. <laughs> but I just took what I already had in my listing presentation. This is free for all of us in our EXP enterprise. So it's a template. Use it. Put your own stuff in it. Um, this is one of my slides about me. Um, I, talk, I show a picture of my family. I talk about how I'm based in Roseville, California, but I do cover the entire Tri-Counties area. And then sometimes I print a map of all the homes I've sold in the last six years, and all those dots look really awesome. Um, now, if you don't have that, don't do it. It's fine, but you'll have it. I promise you. Um, so then I'm mar I've been married to Dawn since 1996. Why am I sharing all this? Because... As we will find out in a future meeting, there's what's called different personality types. Some personalities, this is what they're going to connect to. This is what they are looking for is the personal information. So I start with this. I have four daughters, and I have their picture there. And then our passion is to help the homeless. And right now, um, what we're doing is uh, from the proceeds, my personal income uh, out of the proceeds of every, the sale of every home, we are funding a tiny home in Compassion Village uh, in Sacramento. So someone who's currently experiencing homelessness will be able to live there, it's a permanent house. And then I have a picture of that I'll, I'll show you later, or it's in here somewhere, but I show that too. So the reason um, that we're doing that is two years ago when we were at Disneyland, that's when my youngest daughter was about eight at that time, and we were driving through Jack in the Box, and we look over, it was nighttime, and there's a family you could obviously living in their car. And she's like, what are they doing? I go, well, honey, they're sleeping there. Like, that's where they're living right now. She immediately started weeping. And she goes, we have to help them. And that, I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, we, uh, my husband and I are very involved in the community, and behind the scenes we help, and we partner with a lot of people through um, creating initiatives, we donate a lot of stuff to uh, work on homelessness. But my daughter, who's eight, doesn't see that. And so she's like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? So after a year, I was like, I can't live with this question anymore. <laughs> because already she was thinking, well, when I grow up, I'm going to own a gym that way. Um, and I'm going to be a gymnastics coach so I can help people who are homeless. So then we decided, all right, fine, we're going to, as a family, fund a tiny home so my children can see tangibly this is what we are doing. Today, we wrote the check. It's fully funded. So we started in January. It's $10,000 fully funded. As of today, my husband took the check to... Yay! Yay! I love that. You can see this blubbering, embarrassing video of me sharing on Facebook Live one day what we were going to do, and I just put it out there to my sphere of influence, like, hey, you know, let's do this together, because if you are thinking of buying and selling and you want to participate, this is a way you could. So um, I don't go through quite all of that detail, but I share that story at my listing. And then, um, so... I'm a real estate and legacy planning trainer and recruiter, and I am building a national team. And I enjoy supporting my family and their goals. I love cooking, singing, travel, and crochet. Um, and so if they laugh about stuff, we just, you know, we're spontaneous. And then about my business, this, this is for your C's and your D's. 
They want to know numbers. They want to know what you've done, your accomplishments. Can you get the job done? And so in 2013, I received my real estate license. This is very basic. I don't have a lot of designations like Taffy Maurer. <laughs> she's like, every designation you could pro possibly have, she's getting it. Um, anyway, I was just barely trying to survive and get to my appointments during those times of designation opportunities. Um, I received my license in 2013. In 2018, I achieved luxury designation in the Million Dollar Guild. So I'm a luxury home marketing specialist, and I've sold over 200 homes. Now, I myself personally have sold over 100 homes. But I've helped a lot of other agents, and I've been on the deal with them, coaching them. So I'm counting those, yeah. okay? Yeah. And then when I didn't have any numbers like that, I would have said, our group has sold over 3,000 homes. Done. Over. True. Right? Bill. Uh, Bill. Brent from State Farm. <laughs> anyway, you use our story. We are all together, okay? Our story is your story. Um, and then in 2019, I added a financial services division and a commercial real estate division to my division to my company. And then our big, hairy, audacious goal is by 20. 29, we intend to inspire and help 1 million people build a legacy enterprise that will bless their family and impact the world. I don't spend a lot of time on this, but every time I say it, I believe it more, and I'm putting it out there. And was it embarrassing to put that? Yeah. Very. Every time Who do I think it, I am? More. I love that. Yeah. Who That's do I think I say. am? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so it was hard enough for me to write it out for myself, put it on my own wall, let alone put it on my listing uh, thing. And then I just have those little definitions to remind myself what is a legacy. It's an amount of money or property left to someone in a will, anything handed down from the past. So I'm helping families create legacy. And an enterprise is a project or undertaking, typically one that is difficult or requires effort, a business or company. And that's what I'm passionate about, helping people launch businesses, difficult things. And if you're an agent, you are a business owner. Okay, so that just a little thing from my listing presentation. So these are some things that I've learned along the way. So who you work with matters. This is the reason why when I became an agent, all I cared about was I want to be with Brent Gove. I don't know. Keller Williams? Okay. I don't know. Like, I, I, team? All right. Whatever. I don't care. Like, just tell me where to be, what time to show up. And as long as I don't have a boss managing me, because I couldn't at that time, we had four daughters, two of them special needs, we had three different schools, and my husband was working two jobs, and we had one car that was working. That was my first year of real estate. And Cindy and I couldn't even afford our own signs. And so, you know, that's, <laughs> so I'm like, Brent, I don't care. Whatever I need to do, just tell me when and where, and I will shut up, and I will do whatever. So who you are with matters, and that's why we're all here today, because when you're with that person, you're with all of their people. There's a scripture in the Bible. A very wise woman named Ruth decided to follow and stick with Naomi, her mother-in-law, when everything went to hell in a handbasket, and they lost their husbands. And she said, I don't know, you know about... Whoever, they're, they're going to go their own way. But as for me, oh, your God is going to be my God and your people are going to be my people. And that's what I told Brent even when we left Keller Williams when I was like, ESP, I don't know, but your God is my God and your people are my people. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so because of that, I know where I'm going. I know exactly where I'm going. I know exactly where I'll be. If I want to have what Brent has, I know what it takes because I see what he does. Now, if I don't want that, I, yeah, that's fine. But I own that decision, and I know what to do because of the people I'm around. So you are the average of your five closest friends or partners. So that's why it's so important what room you're in. You want to be in the right room. So don't accept every invitation that comes your way. Just because somebody has a, like a pretty bell and whistle, they're dangling in front of you, I don't know, can they sustain that? Uh, you know, because whatever, uh, it, it's, it's about who. It's about who you are as a person, what's inside of you will come out. Um, mindsets are contagious. So 
this is something that I was so happy to learn about the people in this room. Um, and I think this is from 2015. And I'm going to show you guys. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this was, was this the first time we all went on a team trip together? Tar Darcy had probably gone. I had gone on the cruise. You didn't go the first year. No. This was the second year. They little. Yeah, but this is so our little. second team trip. And we were all like, oh my gosh, we all made it, you know? <laughs> and so um, my brother-in-law lives in Maui, and he knows the island really well, and so he had offered to take me and my husband and our four daughters on a hike. And my question to him was, can a toddler do it in flip-flops? <laughs> That's all I needed to know. He's like, oh, yeah, it's like a 30-minute. He goes, it's called 13 Crossings. There's uh, two sets of waterfalls. 13 Crossings. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Dear Lord. He's like, yeah, we do it all the time. It's like a half hour. Well, he had to be at work by four that day, so I think, what, well, we met at 11 or yeah. 10, and, and we're like, okay, we'll do this, then we'll, like, be gone and have lunch, feed our kids. On the way, we're relaxed, and we're looking at the views. This was the, at the beginning. See all those cute little smiles? We're just going to go for a little day trip. So then... Uh, what happens is that we're literally hacking our way through the rainforest, and it ended up, it was a four-hour thing, let's just put it that way. 30 minutes. Yeah. Well, at this torrential point, downpour. Torrential rains. At this point, I'm like, oh, dear God, I think life flight might be called in <laughs> at some point. So it, it gets better. So that's my brother-in-law who is literally freaking out because he's like, oh, my gosh, what have I, like, he's used, to, he's. In his 40s, single, adventurous, he's used to doing this kind of stuff and scuba diving all over, over the world with just single people that, they do this, right? So then, these are the 13, you cross this thing 13 times. Yes. Okay? And it's gone fast. That's called 13 crossings. And it's no, cold. There's no path. You're like on little bitty, and so then, um, this was us. We had... There were, like, what, there were five, wait, two, four, six, seven adults and, like, 13 kids? And my, my yeah. son was only, like, uh... He was one. Uh, 11, yeah. 11 he months was old. one. And a baby. And a baby. A I baby. <laughs> you're you're okay, we, lost, <laughs> we lost the baby carrier along the way in the hike, so you had to carry him. <laughs> okay, so oh, literally, no. I mean, at this point, the kids are crying, they're complaining, yeah. and we're thinking, Hungry. okay, well, we're, on, we're halfway there. No, we were not. <laughs> but we're like, come on, come on, you could do it, you could do it, you're gonna be so. And then this was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, literally, I'm not kidding. I'm like, oh my gosh, will Darcy and Cindy ever want to talk to me? <laughs> because we were, we didn't say it, but. We were all thinking it. Somebody yeah. could die out here, right? And once again, imagine thirteen kids with no snacks because this was right. a thirty-minute hike, and then we were going to go out to lunch. Uh, <laughs> I found the video. So, okay, I have, I have it. I have it. So then, that everybody's flip flops were getting lost and broken in there. Oh no! Oh my God! And okay, what you're about to see? No shoes. What you're about to see. Is I'm not exaggerating. This was the pace of the entire entire walk, front and back. I've heard you guys share this story a bunch of times. There's never been visual. It's hard to describe. It's yeah. hard to describe. So that was the pace. All right. I mean, kids were like. And then we finally get to the waterfalls. They're kind of like, are we happy we did this? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. And then that was the waterfall we were all going to. Now, there were other waterfalls, but my brother-in-law was like, oh, no, so. we're, we're going to go down. <laughs> and so that was at the very, very end when we all got back to our cars. And, uh, and then that was, that was us. But the thing was, I learned so much about these women. I was like, they're the real deal. Like, they are not a single adult had a negative comment. I mean, the entire time we were laughing, we were like, okay, we got it, we got it, we could do it, we're helping each, like, everybody's families was everybody's family, like, all of our kids belong to everybody, and so that's the caliber, like, that's the room we're in, 
And I might get emotional. Sorry, Facebook. Anyway, um, but that's the caliber of room we're in. And, and so just don't take it for granted. It's all about who you're with. So a lot of companies, a lot of people, other vendors, whatever, they will have some bells and whistles and they want to pull, you know, dangle in front of you. That's fine. I mean, maybe, maybe even give someone a shot, but don't forget, like, what centers us, what brings us together, what is going to be there vendors come and go, some agents come and go, whatever, but there's this core that we have, this nucleus, and I just think this is kind of like an eternal bond, you know, so if you don't get anything else out of this conversation, just knowing that you're in the right place, um, feeding from the right trough, drinking from the right stream, you're going to be fine, you're going to be okay, just know you have this amazing safety net around you. And, you know, if you got to fake it and do a little song and a dance with your client and just use the words, hey, great question, let me get back to you. Memorize that script. Great question, let me get back to you. And then you run back to the group and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's fine. All right, so who you work with matters. And this is why I always, always, always say yes to Brent and James. And I call this real estate church. Mm -hmm. And even Charity is like, oh, I went to real estate church. I mean, you know, you don't want to miss this. It's uh, when I felt like the biggest loser for the first six months of my real estate career because I was working harder than I'd ever worked at anything in my life. And nothing it seemed like was happening. I would come here and I would hear Brent talk and I would think, oh, I can keep going. I, I, can, I can keep doing this. All right. So because I know what's going to happen. I, it's a predictable outcome if you do what you're being taught here. So um, I say yes as much as possible actually to um, my clients too. So this is what clients like to hear and schedules have a way of working out. I learned this about two and a half years ago when my business, my referrals started really kicking in. Now your referral business probably will start kicking in maybe in year two to three. So you got to hang in there, and don't be discouraged if you're not getting referrals. First of all, I didn't prospect any friends and family my first two years, not at all. The only thing I would do was I would post every time I had a closing, or when I was holding an open house or showing a house, I'd be like, oh, I'm out here selling this whatever. It's not in contract, but I'm selling it. <laughs> That's all they need to know. And then I'd have a closing here and there. And um, I would post it, and it takes that time for your friends and family to watch and see, oh, okay, they're legit. They're not just trying this, because they want their deals in the hands of somebody who's fully committed, right? So don't be discouraged. In year two and three, referrals will start kicking in. So what happened is you start getting busier. You're like, okay, they want to show, they want to see this property then, and this, and this. So you just say yes. Double book yourself. Like, if you don't know how you're going to fit it in, say yes. And what I've learned is um, a lot of appointments fall through anyway. But then your client, you're not the one changing it on them. They're changing it on you. And now you're doing them a favor. And they're like, oh, I like this realtor. They're, they're flexible. They don't know that you're like, thank God they can't. <laughs> yeah. They don't know that. And then if you double book a showing and they both hold, what you do is you just pick whichever one you need to have, like, continue the most rapport with, and you stick with that showing. And the other one, you dial any, like, any of the newer agents who they have a key, they don't know maybe anything they're doing other than they have a key and they know how to open a door, but they would love to either learn, um, if I, I believe this, my personal opinion is if you're a new agent, you're both new, do each other favors. But if you're an experienced agent and you can pay a new agent a little showing fee, it's just, it's, it's helpful. So, um, but I don't think when you're new, you should expect to be paid by one another if you're both new and you're learning. You're helping each other. You're learning. You're in it together. So just cover for each other. It'll all work itself out. But if I, right now, I, if I, you know, have a double booking, I call somebody, I say, hey, um, hey, Rachel, listen, um, my showing assistant is helping me out today because I, I wanted to get you in this house when you need to get in there. So I want to make it work out for you. And uh, you are going to love my showing assistant, L'Oreal. She's going to 
be there. She'll be on time. She will open the door. She will light up the house for you. She will not answer a single question for you about the house. But um, if you love the house, I want you to call me right away, and we'll get going on the offer. That's it. And it's worked so great, and my clients love it. So um, double book yourself. It's fine. And then remember, your client, your family is your first client. And I think that's just a personal balance. You know what seasons you've got to sit down with your family and say, hey, right now dad's going to be doing this, or right now mom's going to be doing this. I've learned that if they get to buy into it, they're okay with it. But if you just go along and you're chaotically trying to be everywhere for everybody and you don't include your kids in on the conversation, that's when they struggle and they feel like you're gone all the time. So anyway, um, they're your first client, and I would rather disappoint any of you than my kids. So um, results cannot elude you. This is one of my favorite things. I remember where I was sitting in Brent's meeting when he was like, and you're doing this and this and this. You know, Brent, like his little whiteboard and everything. And, and he's like, and they, results cannot elude you. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I had been doing open houses every Saturday, every Sunday. I just told you about my life at the time. Plus, we were pastoring a church, and most Sundays I was either preaching or leading worship and then would go out and, and do it, pick up signs, then go back to church for an international church potluck or whatever we were doing. And uh, Missy was right with me. We, you know, And so I just remember... I didn't know at the time my pipeline was getting so strong, but I, you know, you can't feel that and you don't know it when you're new. So I started October 1st, probably when he did that, results cannot elude you. I was maybe like January-ish or so, and I was like, I don't know how much longer I could keep this up. I had not had a single deal in contract ever. And February 22nd, my first deal went into contract, and um, I closed 15 by September 1st. Wow. Yay! Mm. Yeah! That's amazing. So, <laughs> results cannot elude you. Mm. They can't. It's building that you have to be consistent and keep. So, there's this phrase uh, in a book I'm reading called Building an Empire. I highly recommend the book, <clears throat> but like, don't go into too many things at once, so... Just be careful what books you read because <laughs> you need to master whatever you're doing right now before you add something else. But um, he has this phrase, I will until. So if it hasn't happened yet, you're not done. Just keep doing it. People who say, well, I tried open houses. That's, they didn't really work for me, and they did it for a month. They haven't tried open houses. Do it for six months. Now you've tried open houses. And um, same with online lead gym. They, oh, I did that for a month. Nope then you didn't do it. Online leads, no, you got to like stick with it for three to six months. Sphere of influence marketing, what I now do, uh, 12 months before you really start seeing it. So master one approach at a time. Like I was just saying, you cannot take in more. So if you're working on open houses, master it, master it, master it, do it to you. Or pick something and don't try and do five different styles consistency, and be faithful to real estate church, okay? Um, obviously, I, that's what I love about Brent. If it's a family thing or whatever, I mean, we can miss it for whatever, but don't miss it for a home inspection. Don't miss it for, you know, showing houses. That's, uh, you need to be here. Um, staying on top, I take quarterly classes to stay current with my industry. That is in my listing presentation, by the way. I decided to keep that there for, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, so it's totally okay if you don't know something. And if you ever call me and ask me, oh, Krista, okay, there's this, okay, it's a probate sale, and what is different about that? And I'm like, you know, actually, I haven't personally done a probate sale yet, so you just ask the agent. And it's okay. You can ask the agent you can ask the title rep. You can ask the escrow officer. You can ask the lender. If you're confused on something they've said, don't pretend you know. And it's okay that you don't know. Like, how could you know everything? So um, I, I just think that the better you are at asking questions, 
the more people like working with you because you're not coming across like you're, I don't know. It, it's hard to explain. Here's why. Others like to have input. It empowers them. So if I'm not sure about something on a deal, I just say, and I got this from Taffy. She talked about getting stuck in a transaction and her, even if you know what to do, it's still powerful to say, so here's where we are at. What, what do you suggest? What do you think we could do? Even if you already know the best course, people like to feel like they have, um, you know, part, they want to be part of what the decision. So um, we were nervous. Charity has her first closing. Yay! Yay! So um, it was a little bit nerve wracking this week because they had this huge repair request and it's a flip and it's an older house and. Um, and she was getting some really great feedback from, you know, um, from somebody too, a, a, a different agent who I actually told her to call because I like this person's way of looking at things. And then when she got on the phone with me and I was in, I happened to be in a hurry that day. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, no, no, he's not, he doesn't need to do any of this stuff. It was like all these things and there was $3,800 of dry rot, and it, at first you're thinking like, oh my gosh, that's a deal breaker. I'm looking, I'm like, what is the dry rot? Oh, patio cover? Oh no, no, he's not doing the patio cover. Like that's my thought, right? I'm thinking of it like as a seller now. Now I would never act like that toward the other agent, but I was just, it was just me and, and uh, Charity. So then I was like, okay, we'll get on the phone and I'll help you talk to the agent because it was right for that moment easier for me to just have the conversation than write it all down with her and we had already been both interacting with the agent so it wasn't weird so we call him I'm like hey Jose we are so happy to be in contact with you guys you guys have been amazing to work with and so we got the repair request and um, here's the thing just so you know we want to give you a heads up just so you're not blindsided the seller is inclined to just stick to his guns he just wants to go as is that he's like gonna stand firm on that. Like, do you see a possibility that we could still get through to this on this transaction? And then I just you stop talking. And then it's they are they're the one like <clears throat> trying to make it work. You know, you don't have to make it work. So um, that's what it you know, so so that's it. Just ask questions, become like really good at what question can you possibly ask the other agents so they feel like it's their idea for whatever the solution is. So um, the deal stuck, he, it, right away, he's like, oh, 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 okay, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, no, I don't think there's gonna be any problem. Nice. So anyway, um, don't be afraid to ask the lender when they're saying, well, yeah, the CD's out. Okay, now what's the CD? They need to explain it to you. If you don't know, how would you know? You're not a lender. You know, and I, I could not figure out the flow of a deal until my, after my sixth transaction. Then I finally started to understand, oh, okay, so the inspection contingency. Oh, oh my gosh, okay, appraisal, like I didn't get it. So don't worry about that, it's okay not to know. Um, give yourself a break. So what I do is for an entire day, if I just decide I'm not doing anything. I'm not getting up off the couch. I don't. Just don't. Like, if you can just take, give yourself a break. Like, don't. Why do we have this career? So we could be flexible, right? She's right now thinking. She's thinking you're insane. Kids on the couch all day. I know. I, I was I know. literally thinking yeah, that. I'm yeah. like, that doesn't even sound fun. I, I have to. <laughs> I learned. I knew I'd be younger than me. I think probably. I'm 39. Yeah. You are younger than me. So I'll be, I'm 49. When I hit a certain age, I was like, I can't, I can't keep it up. I just, I can't do the, so you're different than me too. That's yeah. I have issues. Are, I just can't sit okay, still. Yeah. I'm and that's great. Either. But see, more than one way to skin a cat. Like don't, but I'm just saying if I you, if you, yeah. Just get on the couch. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I crochet, remember? So I can crochet for like 12 hours crochet. straight. So anyway, so give yourself a break. There's no emergencies in real estate. No one's going to die. We are not doctors. We're not giving people chemotherapy. We're not uh, transporting a heart for a transplant. It's okay. And so on my voicemail, which you've probably heard this before if you've heard me talk, I just have this standard voicemail. Um, 
which I better check because I think I got when I got my new phone, I never updated it. So I'm not <laughs> sure it's not the robot right now. But basically, hey, I'm so glad you called. I'll, I'm going to return your call within 24 hours, and if it's urgent, send me a text. So any, I can, you know, nothing's going to fall apart in 24 hours. And what they think is an emergency, they don't know. I know what an emergency is in real estate. You know, they don't. So. Um, I also plan stuff. I did learn this from Brent. If you don't put it on your calendar, it'll never happen. The trips, the fun stuff with your family. And then even for a few hours, some days, because I get up a lot of times at 6 or 6.30 and I start working then. It's just where my brain is more focused. And then by 3, I, again, I keep recalling Taffy, Taffy-isms and Brent-isms. Um, Taffy said, you get what you pay for after 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> That is so me. <laughs> I'm like Taffy. I was like, I, you know what? I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm maxed. I, <laughs> so I am really careful who I talk to after five o'clock and how critical is this conversation because maybe we shouldn't be having it right now. <laughs> so uh, things become more clear when they can sit and simmer. You know, let somebody think about it. Uh, so. Is this making sense to you guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Amazing. A lot of stuff clears itself up. And um, uh, let's see. Understand your system. So I'm a winger. Like, I wing it. Right? Wing it. And because of that, I know. I like that word. Because of that, <laughs> I mean, we have no choice. Yeah. Some of you in the room that are high C's, you're like, what in the world? Like, how, yeah. But I just, I... That's how I can get through all the stuff I have going on. But because of that, you would think I don't have a system or you don't have it. You still have a system. You have a system. So what I did was after a couple years and I had the same, I found patterns like, okay, this is what I usually tend to, because I like to prevent fires instead of putting them out. That's just my style. I would rather, I'm a, more of a coach, even with my clients. I prepare them for the inspection. I tee up the offer with the other agent. I like whatever. To, I'm like I'm always setting expectations ahead of time. That way they're relieved when it's never as bad as what I tell them it might be. So um, because of that, I tend to, and I have a whole set of documents on the Brent Gove team Facebook page that I've uploaded. That if you can't find them, let me know. I'll tag you in all of them. But I have. Congratulations on uh, being contract, new escrow information, next steps for buyers, next steps for sellers, um, for pre preparation for the inspection, um, you know, final steps before closing escrow, because I hate having those conversations over and over again. I hate it. Well, then I got to where I hated sending those emails out. I'm like, kill me now. Anything that gets repetitious, I can't stand it. So I still, <laughs> I'm right there with if you. I have to do it more than four <laughs> times, I'm like, oh, dear God. So um, you're, if, if you feel that way about an activity, it happened to me again this year with meeting the photographer. I'm like, dear God, if I have to go meet a photographer again and sit there during pictures, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose it. So anyway, I still have my standards you know, that I want. But I don't have to be present for those to be carried out. So um, what, what I want you to do is write down what you hate, that you do every time on every deal. And you know it has to be done, and it needs to be said, it needs to be emailed, but you don't like it. So write it down, and then write down what you're not doing that you know you should be doing. And there are some things only you can do. You can't outsource it. You can't outsource who you are. You can't outsource uh, booking listings and buyers. You can't outsource that stuff. So um, then what type of person can do these things for you? Sometimes you need, you know, for me, what I've learned is I hired a licensed agent as my TC, and which we have Debbie Talks. She's, I don't know, is she still a licensed agent? But either way, she, she's, yeah, anyway. But... Licensed agent as my closing manager, which I will show you in two seconds what my closing manager does. Now, I did not do hire a closing manager until two and a half years ago. But from day one, I paid a TC. Why on God's green earth would I do paperwork when I could be spending that same time getting more clients? And if you're really good at paperwork, you're probably not good at real estate. So don't be a salesperson, be a TC. I'm just saying. 
It will frustrate you. Okay, so um, this is, okay, make a huge commitment. So remember the commitment I told you guys that our family made about selling the tiny homes? Every single day, this has been staring me in the face all year long. Um, where is it? Where is it? It's my, it's my little, uh, my thermometer. I've been tracking my sales and how much money I've committed. Now, don't you think, like, halfway through, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's going to take me two years to build this tiny house. <laughs> like, uh, can I even do this? And it's not even a huge goal. When I committed to this, I knew that if I even sold half of what I sold last year, I could do it. But the task of it and the commitment, and I had made this public statement that I'm going to do this, I just felt accountable, now not just to myself, but the whole community. Like, I've said I'm going to build a tiny home. And so just make a commitment, and the details will follow. Um, but this is the tiny home. This is Compassion Village. And get this. There are two, two tiny home design awards that were just uh, released by um, these prominent architects, and one of them was selected to be built at Compassion Village, and my, that's going to be my tiny home. <gasps> so uh, it's going to be like media and like a reveal and then all the stuff. I, I mean, it's amazing. So um, anyway, that's Angel. She lived in the village there, and then sadly she was hit by a car. Oh, I know, so terrible, oh. <laughs> so terrible. Anyway, but it's a beautiful little village. Um, so nobody else will value your time if you don't. Okay, so I kind of had that one out of order. We're going back to outsourcing what you hate. Okay, not just what you hate, but what you're not good at. So um, nobody else will value your time if you don't. Back to a TC. And some people, they, what, they want to keep what I call baby money. You want to, really, you want to keep $350, $400 on your transactions um, and save that when you're now losing maybe two deals a month? So you're giving up baby money. And no, you're keeping baby money to give up the big money. What is your family, what would your family think about that? What you're doing when you hire someone else you're banking on yourself. You're saying, I believe in myself and I value myself that much that I am going to. And guess what? If the deal doesn't close, they don't get paid. You're not losing anything. You're only gaining. There's only upside. So how many hours do you spend on all those things that I asked you to write down, which you still need to write down? Write down what you hate about each transaction. What, write down what you... And then... How many clients or prospects could you touch in that amount of hours? No. How many open houses could you hold? How many online leads could you call? How many lenders could you connect with? How many, not, you know, only Alicia, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> you just made her day. That was awesome. Okay. So here's what my closing manager does, and this is just my own thing. I mean... Um, so they handle all my MLS entries. I hate, hate entering stuff in the MLS. Is that just me? I hate no, it. I hate it. I hate it. Something I hate it. Terrible. I hate too. marking it pending. I hate entering open I houses. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate it. Anyway, um, now I always review it before it goes live because it's my name on that listing. Okay, I have them set up the lockbox. All right, why am I driving to Elk Grove every other day to set up lockboxes? Okay, you better set up your lockbox. Uh, no, I forgot to get a lockbox. Okay. <laughs> um, I have them order, confirm, and attend the photography session. Now, of course, it's a photographer of my choosing that I kind of know what to watch for, what their patterns are. I've already, I've already gone to the house. I already know, like, what needs to be done. And then I've gone with the closing manager the first time or two so that they understand, <coughs> yeah, I like the bed straightened, I want, you know, and... But if a bed is a little bit messy, to me that's a small price to pay for not having to spend three hours meeting a photographer because I can go on another listing appointment instead, right? So um, next steps emails on my behalf, which I already mentioned. Order and confirm inspections. Why do I need to do that? I don't, that, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll have an app for that very soon. So even a robot could do that, right? So send final steps emails. 
Now, I personally handle all client communication about the transaction and direct communication with the other agent. So what happens is my TC and my closing manager both know that um, if they ask a question like, okay, well, should we such and such? They immediately say, oh, Crystal, will get back to you right on that right away. And immediately, like, I'm on the phone calling them. So we CC each other on all communication. At any moment, if I want to chime in on anything, I just do. Because I, if I can see, okay, wait, no, they're going into more of a different type of question. I need to answer that or I'm going to input or every now and then I forget to tell my closing manager a different nuance about the deal. And so they're going on autopilot. And I'm like, oh, yikes, I forgot to tell them that. And I just step in and, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. And, and by the way, this. You know, so the, the client doesn't think, don't you know what's happening? You know, so it's um, all, you do, all you need to do is just have somebody that you have good chemistry with. And anyway, if you need a good closing manager, there's a few names I could give you. Um, so after the sale, my database, this is something that I never did until two years ago, actually a year and a half ago. So I was that person that had a half of a spreadsheet filled out, post-it notes, business cards, Oh yeah, my past deals are in MLS, so if I needed that information, I could go get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, again, if you're really good at databases, you probably have a hard time selling houses. But that, you know, just saying, it, it maybe not, because there's so many different ways you can use technology nowadays to do it. But um, I hired that, finally, and I didn't do that when I was new. I couldn't afford to. So I debated, do I hire an assistant? which I will then have to manage and teach them what I want, when I want, how I want it, and then make sure and follow up with them that they're actually doing it. And if I get somebody smart enough to do it the way I want, that I don't have to really watch over and babysit, they're not going to be happy in that kind of work for more than maybe a year. So then I'm going to have to retrain somebody after a year because if I get the person I want, they're not going to be satisfied with this work, right? So I decided to hire a marketing company that that's all they do. And you can, there's this uh, company that you should check out. They, entered, they spoke at the Las Vegas leadership event called 123 Employee. Check them out. They're a virtual assistant. They actually have complete packages already designed for realtors that you can just say, I want that realtor package, and then they'll customize it to you. You have your own designated personal assistant. And we saw an, a real-time demonstration of it while we were there. It was amazing what they could do. But I love my marketing company. They're here local. I already have them, so I'm not going to change. And um, 123 Employee. What was your company? Mine is Fusion Growth uh, Partners. Partners. Thank you. <laughs> and they are expensive. But my account manager, Carl, who I will connect to you with anytime, he's very transparent. He'll tell you all their costs up front. Like, he's not hiding anything. He's like, well, here's our cost, and here's why we're charging it the way we do, because we have to, they don't, they only break even after the first year with the, with the agent. So if you don't stay with them for more than a year, they're not making any money. And that's fine. That's their business model, whatever. I, um, I had a really hard time thinking about my friends and sphere of influence getting a mailer from me every four weeks. I was embarrassed. I'm like, that is so obnoxious. How embarrassing. And then I decided, I know, isn't that crazy? It's a <laughs> terrible mindset. Terrible mindset. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I became a convert. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's fine. And, and I used to think, well, print mailers, like, they're not going to save these. No, they don't. But they don't forget about it. So, on this list, I put a star by one, two, three, four, five, six. These are all my sphere of influence, the six of these deals that I know for sure called me because they get this all the time. For sure, I know that's why they called me. So, the thing is, I didn't, and then the rest were um, referrals. So, I don't like converting strangers. I've done it. We all have to do it. You have to pay your dues. I still am willing to do it. But if I don't have to, I don't want to. And this is how I don't. So we, KV Core already has campaigns you could be using for free to do this. So you don't need to pay someone to do it. But for me, I will never do it. 
I just know that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, it's not like how I'm going to spend my time. So would I if I had to? Absolutely. But I don't have to right now, so I'm not going to. This is also, they send little letters. They write these letters. I've shown you guys my story letter before. They write this stuff. I approve it, and it gets mailed out based on the campaign I approve. So <clears throat> I have a copy for this because you, you should do this anyway. Even if you don't hire a company, just write out this letter. You can copy. I didn't say this publicly. You can copy this. And um, <laughs> anyway, because it's not really my uh, property. But, <laughs> uh, anyway, so just you know, rephrase it, but do something. And send it. So this can. This is for your eyes and for your C's and D's. Your resume. I did not want to send my resume out. And then I got somebody ran into somebody. He's like, "Oh, we got your letter." And it was my story letter. And I got so many texts from people about my story letter. And then he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we got that." He goes, "Yeah, I didn't read the whole thing." And I go. Um, yeah, I think they wanted to send my resume too, but I just, he was like, now that I would have read. And I was like, really? Well, there's an, there's a C for you, you know, so whatever. Um, okay, I think this is it. I hope this is okay. That was all right. I just, I threw a Amazing. lot Yay. at you. Amazing. That was That's awesome. really good. Okay. But, um, Brent had asked, or James had asked me, just go through some of your practices. So I just picked my favorites that I, right now, you can't talk me out of any of this yet, but you know, it's, I'm, I'm always open to learning something too, so. All right. Um, yes, Darcy. How much do you pay the closing manager? Oh, okay. I pay, so I used to pay the closing manager, was it 400 Cindy? It was 400 But then when I decided I'm not going to a photography free session again, I'm not doing it. I have too many phone calls to make right now, and I can't do this because I'm, oh, yeah, I think we should, yeah, let's put the pillow there. And I'm like, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> um, I want to make phone calls. Uh, that day, I think I worked it out, and you work it out with your person, but I think we worked out, would it be worth 150 extra to you to do this and this and this and this more? And they thought, yeah. So, and then I always check in, like, is it still worth it to you, or is it still working for you? That kind of thing. It's so, be Salisbury, right? Well, she was, and she did for a long time. And then I've been using Cindy uh, Lissinger, not because Debbie is not good; she's amazing. But what happened was, um, I just wanted my friends to move here so badly that I told <laughs> <laughs> I told Debbie, hey, I might. Like, you're amazing, but I still might. I want to, you know, share the love a little bit. And then I wanted to go back to Debbie because she's getting too busy with her own deals. And Debbie doesn't want to do the extra stuff. So I was thinking then what I could do is maybe Debbie does the basics. And then I can always find any other agent who just wants a little extra money to just go do the lockbox, go do the photos. It's really that kind of stuff, right? I just don't like driving and... I forget lockboxes. I had a lockbox... I was missing a lockbox for over a year, and an uh, agent called me. She's like, oh, yeah, you know, by the way, um, my client said your lockbox is still on Danby. I'm like, oh, my word. That was a year and a half ago. So, <laughs> yes. For those that don't know you, what kind of sales volume do you do? How many transactions okay. a year? That kind of thing. So... I mean, I've always been, I've always qualified for master's every year. I've never once paid the $200 to have the master's logo, which I now regret. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you I see year. all you guys at the bar. I'm like, man, I could have had master's like six years well, running. Right? We all, we all started, started like that time ever. Yeah. But we anyway, I couldn't afford it. I know where you can buy the plaque. You don't have okay. To <laughs> I couldn't afford it the first year. I couldn't yeah, afford could $50. Not. Dollars. No. That, okay, that's what, you think master's is like, no, you're barely surviving, okay? <laughs> if you're a capper and you're masters, you're still. So I, let's see, I've done 16 this year, but actually two of those I really don't count because I was helping somebody else and I was a co-listing agent on it and I really didn't manage it and it was their deal that they bought, they booked. Um, which, by the way, I'm never going to do that again. I've learned just don't put your name on a listing if you're not the one managing it. So, um not that there was any problems. <laughs> it's just, it's probably just not smart uh, for liability. So um, I will, I average, a, probably I'll do, I would think 
because I've got a few more on the books right now coming. I mean, I would think I'll do over 25 this year. I, my lowest year was 13. That was my second year. So I had 15 the first year, 13 the second year. It's hovered between 15 and 20. But then again, you got to know, like, I was sacrificing too because if we were coaching someone else, mm -hmm. yeah. and what, that's your time you're not booking point? your own deals. So, huh? What's your average price point? I'd say fives. Yeah, okay. fives. I, I've just I've been tracking that a little bit this year because like I had a mobile home for ninety two thousand, <laughs> and so if you take some of those lower ones out, maybe it, you know. But yeah, that's a good point. Do you find that lower price homes are easier than higher price homes? Oh no, exactly. Yeah, no. People don't have any money for repairs. You know, it's just anyway. But that's but see because I'm by referral only. I treat the $92,000 mobile home as just the same as I would my million dollar client yeah. because that's going to lead to something else. Now, would I go fishing there on purpose with an open house? Absolutely not. No. If I'm going to fish on purpose, I'm going to fish in a you know, five to $700,000 fishing hole. So. Chris, is there a way that we can get a copy of the presentation that you did? Sure, yeah. I can put it up on the, go. do all of you guys have access to the Go page or Facebook page? If you don't, um, talk to Rob and we can just email it to you, right? Yeah, just okay. email, email us on board yet, or just... Uh, I'll email uh, this to Rob Yeah. and he can send it out. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Email. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Email us. <laughs> just, just email Rob at Just Say It Well, not the onboarding one. Yeah, we yeah. We have so much going on there. So the, the Rob at Just Rob Say at It just Well. Rob at well. Just Say It Well.com. Well. Yeah. And then uh, I'll have it. I'll also put it on the team page and I'll put the, the presentation with it. But if you're not on there and we're kind of maxed out on our Brent's friends right now, we're at 5,000. We're trying to purge. So we're having trouble yeah. talking to people. But so just we'll, we'll we can email it if, yeah. So we'll get it to you. Thank you guys. I feel Thank like you. I, yeah. Chris, real quick, one question on that 36 touches that you have to marketing. What does that cost oh, per client? Okay, per client. I'll just tell you, well, I can't really tell you my deal because they don't do it anymore. No. But I can, I can um, connect you with Carl and he'll tell you exactly. I will tell you this. It, okay, six deals. What would you invest in marketing for six deals? What would you invest? Is it worth 20000 to you? And those are generally way easier to Oh, I, I'm not converting a single else. client. It's done. When I show up at their house, they've already decided they're going with me. Mm. That's it. And my listings went way up. So I used to do, like, of course, in the beginning, I was all buyers, maybe one or two listings, uh, first couple years. Then it was like half and half. And now it's almost all listings. I, I've worked with maybe two buyers this year. And now I have the option, if I want, I can um, offload a buyer and partner with someone else and split it 50-50 with them, which blesses someone else. But then I'm not running around like crazy. So, um, so yeah, I think their, their break-even is 20000 in their first year, and then they have just different options on how to partner with you. And then if you have a team, you can add team members for cheaper, and it's their own database and their own name and number, but your logo and your brand on this, if that makes sense. Like, if I wanted to build my own team and add and let them plug right into my same marketing and they get all the same postcards but my team's their own name and number on it, they could. I don't want to do that. I don't want to manage people. I don't want to have employees. I don't want to be anybody's boss, and I don't want a boss. And that's what I love about this job.